game theory optimal strategy. Now with the advent of solvers, we know exactly how we're supposed to play every given spot. So the question is, is it true that the closer you get to optimal strategy, the more edge you're gonna have against your opponent? If you take two players and one has much closer execution optimal strategy than the other, is that player always gonna win? The answer is no. So let's talk about why. So in this example, we're gonna be looking at a spot where one player is bet river, the other player is deciding to call or fold uh, with a bluff catcher. The first opponent is Joe. Uh, so Joe is the person betting the river. He's bluffing 20% of the time, um, betting pot on the river when he's supposed to bluff 33% of the time, 33.3 .3 repeating, uh, to be bluffing optimally. And his first opponent is Miss Optimal. Miss Optimal plays perfectly. She folds correctly according to game theory optimal strategies in every single spot. So what that means in this spot is she's going to fold 50% of the time. Now, a quick explainer of the reason that math works out the way it does. In optimal strategy, you want to construct a strategy where your opponent cannot improve their expectation by deviating one way or the other. So the reason that Miss Optimal folds the river 50% of the time is because if Miss Optimal folds 55% of the time, then Joe's supposed to bluff every hand that can bluff because Joe's risking one pot size bet to win one pot size bet. So if Miss Optimal's folding over half the time, he's gonna make money with his bluffs. Now, if Miss Optimal only folds 45% of the time, now Joe should actually not bluff because he's not gonna get enough folds. That's why optimal strategy works out the way it does. As far as the Joe's betting range, it's supposed to be 33% bluffs because when Miss Optimal calls with a bluff catcher, she's risking one pot size bet to win the pot plus Joe's pot size bet. So she's getting two to one. So a third of the time she's supposed to win two pot size bets and uh, two thirds of the time she's supposed to lose one pot size bet. And that's how she breaks even. Uh, if he was bluffing too little or too much, then she would adjust accordingly. So in this example, he's bluffing too little. She's still calling optimally, which cannot be exploited. She cannot be exploited by calling optimally. He's not, Joe is not gaining an edge on her um, because she's calling exactly optimally here. Just for the sake of easier math, let's say that Joe bets $10 into a $10 pot. Uh, 100 times against Miss Optimal. So what's going to happen? 50 times Miss Optimal is going to fold, um, and her net result is zero dollars over those 50. 50 times Miss Optimal is going to call. So now what's her net result when she calls? Well, of those 50 times, Joe is bluffing 20%, which is 10 times out of 50. So 10 times Miss Optimal is going to win $20. And then the other 40 times that Miss Optimal calls, Joe's not going to be bluffing. Miss Optimal is going to lose $10. So the net result there, the 10 winning calls, that's 10 times $20 win equals $200. On the 40 losses, that's 40 times $10 equals $400. Um, and so Miss Optimal's net result is 200 minus 400 for negative $200 over this 100 hand sample opportunity. Now, Miss Optimal lost money here, but she's not getting exploited. The reason that her optimal strategy lost money, when Joe's value betting, he gets called um, half the time. And that's going to happen no matter how often he's bluffing. His value bets are going to stay his value bets. He's not going to change his value bets. Um, and so then his bluffs, if he if he added the requisite amount of bluffs, it would just be more hands actually that were bets. Because Miss Optimal would fold half the time, Joe would break even on all those extra bluffs that he's supposed to add. But it doesn't change his overall expectation. So let's talk about another player, Mr. Fold. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and you want to let me know with a comment or a like, uh, or most of all, with a subscription to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Mr. Fold, as you might expect, folds a lot. In fact, he folds every time that he faces a river bet. Um, this is a horribly, horribly exploitable strategy. If you're playing against somebody who never calls a river bet, you should crush them because you should bluff every hand. But he's playing against Joe, who's only bluffing 20% of the time when he pots river. So let's do the math on this. It's gonna be a little bit easier. Joe's gonna bet the river 100 times and Mr. Fold is gonna fold 100 times for a net result of $0. Mr. Fold is gonna break even. Um, now notice that Mr. Fold broke even while Miss Optimal lost $200. And that's because despite her playing perfectly and um, Mr. Fold playing terribly, his strategy was exploiting Joe, who is playing only slightly badly. A 20% bluff in a spot where you're supposed to bluff 33% is pretty close. Um, and that's actually something you'll see, like a lot of players are, are somewhere around there. So this is a strategy that is certainly closer to optimal. Now it's not the same spot, but certainly closer to optimal than Mr. Fold, but not quite as optimal as Miss Optimal. 
and yet the one who's doing best here at, at exploiting the other player is actually Mr. Fold. And Mr. Fold is making the most money, or in this case, losing the least amount of money. Now, obviously, if you put Mr. Fold up against a Mrs. Bluff, um, Mr. Fold would be in a lot of trouble because Mrs. Bluff is going to bluff every river and Mr. Fold is going to fold every river and um, he's just going to lose a lot more pots. Now, in the exact example of facing 100 river bets, he's going to perform the same. But in actuality, what's going to happen in the game is he's just facing river bets all the time and he's always folding the pot. The thing about the difference between theory and practice is that in practice, nobody's capable of, of optimal play. I'll give a more complex example, but without math. Um, but, but hopefully you'll follow. So you and I are playing against each other. My river strategy is to fold 80% of the time when I'm supposed to only fold 50%. Um, and then my bluffing strategy is I'm going to under bluff like Joe. I'm going to bluff 20% of the time. So I'm over folding, I'm under bluffing. But your strategy is that you're slightly over calling. So instead of folding 50%, you're folding 45%. Um, and then instead of bluffing 33%, you're bluffing 20%, just like me. So our, our bluffing strategies are identical. So no edge, no edge gained or loss there. From a game theoretical perspective, yours is much better than mine. You're folding 45%, which is super close to 50%. I'm folding 80%, which is not that close to 50%. But if my 80% fold is an exploit, it's an adjustment to your under bluff, and you are not adjusting to my under bluff, I'm winning this game. I'm winning against you on the river. And this comes up all the time. The, the thing about it is if you're so focused on trying to execute an optimal strategy that you're not looking for ways to deviate, you're not looking for leaks in your opponent, well, what's going to happen is you're not going to exploit any of your opponent's leaks, but they're, if they're any good, are going to find yours and exploit them. So maybe you are folding 45% of rivers instead of 50, and their adjustment is uh, they're going to stop bluffing as much. Now that, that now they're making money in that game. And then let's say you're under bluffing against me. Um, but let's say even you're, you're bluffing 28% instead of 33 rather than 20% instead of 33. My adjustment should still be to fold a lot if you're never going to counter adjust. Now what's supposed to happen is, you know, you're bluffing 28%. I realize that I fold 80%. You realize that you start bluffing everything and so on and so forth. But if you're just focused on trying to execute a near optimal strategy and you're not going to notice my deviations or care about my deviations because you're just trying to execute what a solver told you to do, the fact that you're human and you can't execute it perfectly, there are going to be gaps uh, between your strategy and the solver strategy. And as a human, studying you, playing against you, seeing showdowns, seeing bluffs that you've missed, seeing calls that you've made that you shouldn't have, I will start to form these reads on you and I will start to adjust and deviate. And if you're not noticing my adjustments, if you're just still trying to get as close as you can to optimal, you're gonna lose. Um, so it's a very common misconception that the player closest to optimal is going to win. The player closest to optimal is the least exploitable, but that's only if we're talking about somebody playing a static strategy. Um, if you're playing a static strategy that's closer to optimal and I'm playing a dynamic strategy that is trying to you know, be very exploitable, make huge overfolds or huge overcalls based on what you're doing, yet you're not gonna counter, um, then I'm gonna win. And it's as simple as that. <laughs>